The first few races in 2024 revealed what we could already guess before the season started. Alpine arrived at the very end of the grid. But what is the problem there? After the rule change 2022, Alpine was on a good way. They started the new era with the right concept. Large, downwashing side pods. Just like Red Bull. So while other teams had to sort out their overall concept, Alpine could concentrate on developing their car further. Alpine was a team with very experienced people and they could reach 4th position in the Constructors' Championship in 2022. In 2023, McLaren and Aston Martin made huge progress, which left Alpine on a lonely 6th place, well behind the top runners, but also well in front of the back markers. In general, the problem of the Enstone-based team was always that expectations are high, but the investments are not on the same level compared to other top teams. Because after all, and we tend to forget that, Alpine is a works team. They produce their own chassis in Enstone and their engine comes from Viry in France. But the relationship with Viry was never easy. After winning four constructors championships in a row, Viry was not on top of their game for the new hybrid engines in 2014. They lost the trust of their customers through unreliability and a lack of performance. Today they have no customers anymore. So from supplying four F1 teams with engines in 2013, they now only produce engines for themselves. And the latest bad decisions before the engine freeze meant that Alpine is left with the weakest F1 engine and is not allowed to update. They, as a works team, even asked the FIA if they would be allowed to develop their engine further while others are not allowed to, just to catch up. But that didn't happen. So the weak engine doesn't help performance on track. And the fact that they don't have customers anymore means they earn no money from customers and get less data. So also financially, there is less payback. Since Renault took back control of the team in 2016, they had numerous plans and strategies to win world championships. But this didn't work. And now we have the classic situation we see in motorsport every now and then. The car manufacturer's management is not satisfied with the performance and they start intervening. The management was changed, the internal structure was changed. And the latest process was triggered after the huge progress of Aston Martin over the winter before the 2023 season. The F1 team kept on telling the management in Paris that it will take time to get to the front of the grid. And suddenly Aston Martin did it over one winter. But we have to understand here that the Aston Martin team was already in good shape since they copied the 2019 Mercedes. They had a setback in 2021 because of the regulation changes and in 2022 they started with the wrong concept. So in 2023 they were finally there. The situation at Renault however, or Alpine, was very different. And when McLaren managed to turn their season around during 2023, it was enough for Paris. They fired the whole top management of the Alpine F1 team and desperately wanted to do the same as McLaren. So they even copied their management structure, hoping that then they could do the same. But things went south. All the trouble around the team and firing of capable people made other good people leave as well. With all that pressure from Paris to win races soon and the constant internal trouble, they somehow needed to design a car for 2024. They started with designs, failed the crash test, had to thicken up components to legalize the car and ended up with an overweight car with little paint to save weight. And they already kept expectations low during the presentation. Preseason testing revealed that Alpine is last and the first races confirm that. In fact, while Aston Martin's car is 1.5 seconds faster within 6 months on the same track, Alpine's car is 8 tenths slower than last year. And that's a real disaster for a works team. So the question comes up, can they scrap the 2024 car and simply run the 2023 car again? While this has been done in the past, the problems are that regulations change slightly. And for example, the roll hope needs to withstand higher forces. So although it seemed like a solution, the legalization of last year's car would need lots of resources and the marketing effect would be a disaster as well. So Alpine will have to keep on working on their current car and try to make it faster. In Suzuka, partly also because the two Alpines touching each other at the start, the Alpines seem to drive in a lower category. And with their huge nose cones, they unfortunately do look a bit like F2 cars. So what will happen to the legendary Enstone team now? 
Will Renault give up and sell the team? Will this be the end of the F1 engine department in Viry? Or will they be able to turn things around and get back to the front of the field? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and see you at the next video.